And so taking a look at our site, uh, we have our content box, which is like this part of our box. Then we have the padding, which goes on the outside of the content box. We're adding to the total size of the element. Uh, then after we add the padding, there is another part of the box model, which is called the border. And the border is a lot like padding, but it has the advantage of it being able to be a different color from the background that you have. So if we'll stick with these paragraphs for now, I'm gonna add a border. Uh, the thing with borders, there's lots of properties. We're gonna start with border width. I'll do 20 pixels. And then I'm gonna do a border style of solid. And we also have a border color, border color right there. And let's just come in with a color of, we'll use a hex code this time, 35 DE. Uh, on there to get a really tacky looking color coming on uh, that we can see there. And so we're getting the content box, then we're getting the padding, and then after that we're getting this border added on there. And I realize that uh, for if people are a bit hard of sight, uh, that might be hard to see. So I'm gonna make that black instead. Um, not hard of sight, but for colorblind issues, that might have been very difficult to see the difference there. So this should be higher contrast. So we can see we have the, the padding coming in outside of the content box, then we get this border color coming in outside of that. And we can come in with a bigger value and we get a thicker border where I come in with a smaller value and then we come in with a nice, a bit more of a smaller border on there. Now with this, I think color is the most straightforward of all the things that we're looking at. I'm just gonna close my dev tool so we have a bit more room to work with. And uh, I think the most obvious, like color here, I don't think needs much of an explanation in how it's actually working. So uh, it just works the same as our background color or our text colors. We can use hex codes or any other way to do colors there. Uh, the width is relatively straightforward. We see how big we want it to be. The style is a bit different in that we have a lot of different styles. And I'm gonna include a list down below of the different ones you can try. And I'd encourage you to try different ones because I'm not gonna look at all of them now. But just to show you, we have things like dotted that makes things dotted. Uh, another one, and if you wanna get like a bit more old school, I guess, I can do things like groove uh, that makes it look like this like fake grooved effect that's really terrible. Um, and it you know tries to make it look 3D without it actually looking 3D. And there's several of them. Uh, that are like that. So you can, again, look at that list down below and play around with those if you'd like to. But just like our padding, we can actually control it individually on the different sides. And these are actually shorthands. This is the shorthand for the border top, bottom, left, and right, or inline start, inline end, block start, block end. Not only that, though, borders take things up another level with how the shorthands work. Because while these are shorthands, we actually have another shorthand, which is just border all on its own. And this is probably the most common way that you'll write a border. So I want to focus on this for a bit where let's just change it up a little bit. I'll say it's uh, 20 pixels. I'm going to come in with the same color we have here because it should be high enough contrast to be easy to see. Uh, and then I'll do dotted for now, just so we have something uh, that looks a little bit different. And we can see the dots come in along there. Now, the interesting thing with the border shorthand is the order that you put the different values in doesn't matter. So I could take my dotted and actually put it as the first value. And if I refresh here, it's still going to work. Or let's just change that over to solid for now. Solid is the one that you use almost all the time when you're using borders. Uh, so there we go. We can see the border is coming in with a solid border. And I could take this 20 pixels and I can move it to the end and refresh. And it's still working. And I'll reduce that down to 10 just so we can see that it does work. And so this is a really convenient thing with borders is that you just write border and then put three values, solid almost every time, a color and then a size, and you're fine, uh, which is convenient because there are some CSS shorthands where the order of things is very important. We saw that a bit with the, the padding where the order of it was important, but there's other things where they will just break if you put things in the wrong way. Nice thing with border shorthand, throw them in any order and it works. And that's just kind of convenient. So I do like doing that. And when we're using this shorthand, you, this is a shorthand for all the sides. So you can come in and say, this is your border inline. And if we do a border inline, it's only going to be a border on our inline axis. And as you might guess, if I change this to block, it will only be one on the top and the bottom. Because it's our block axis. I could also say, this is my block end. And then that will only go onto the bottom of each one because we're on the block axis and the end is the bottom, or we could change that whole thing to an inline start and refresh. And then we're only doing it on the start. 
And so this is something that you'll sometimes do because you might want a look like this, not with these colors necessarily, but we have a border down on one side with just a solid color going through the rest of it with the text in there. So yeah, having a border only on one side is something you might occasionally do. Or sometimes what you'll have is you will have your border with the regular shorthand. So then you have the border going on all four sides, but then maybe you want to choose only the bottom one and only change the size of it. So then we could say that's our border block and width. And I'll say that's 100 pixels once again, just to highlight uh, really clearly that it is different and it's getting much bigger right there. So I can choose the specific border I want and then choose the specific property. And if you wanted to, yes, you could change the color. Uh, border block and color could then be purple, let's say, and switch that and the color there changes as a quick example. Probably not something you'd want to do with this color combination, uh, but that is a way that I often use it where I'll use the shorthand to set all the sides and then use the uh, like the specific one thing to change one of the values along the way there. And the order here does matter if I had the border declaration all the way at the end here because I have the long hands over here and then I'm overwriting the long hand with my shorthand at the bottom. So if you do want to use the shorthand and overwrite it, just make sure that this comes first and then you do your shorthands afterwards and then you can overwrite it and, and play around with it and whatever it is you want to do. And just really fast, I do want to mention that with the border, I've only been showing the logical properties, but you could do uh, a border top, for example. And if I refresh that, we only get the border on the top instead of using the block start. So border top, border bottom, border left, border right all exist. You'll definitely see them out in the wild. Again, if you're writing your own CSS, I would encourage you to use the logical properties instead. So in this case, uh, I'm going to skip it over because I think you can figure it out on your own now, but I'm going to delete all of this and I'm going to leave the footer like that, but we do need a, a border down here on our footer. If we're going to match the design that we have, it has a bit of a lighter border. The color will be uh, listed for you down below. So you can grab that if you know to match it. And when you've finished with that, I'll see you in the next lesson.